Hello and welcome back to CS128 Honors. In this lesson module, we're going to finish up Rust 101 by talking about input and output. So what is I.O.? I.O. is, as I just said, input and output. And that means that it's the interaction between the computer and specifically your program and external sources where data is going to be the input and it will also output some data. Right? And a really good example of this is, say, reading in a file or asking the user to type something in. These are all examples of input or output. So taking a look at this first example, this is reading in from the command line. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of code. I don't know what half of this means. It's very confusing, and I just don't want to do it. And that's a totally reasonable thing to be thinking right now, because obviously this is a lot of code. However, we're going to break it down into a bunch of smaller steps that should make it easier for you to follow. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is these standard I.O. use things. Now, we'll talk more about this in depth. I think specifically Eustace is going to be doing that next week. But basically, all you need to know right now is that they take code that is written somewhere else and they make it available to you. So then we have over here a variable that we're calling input, and we're saying it's an empty string. We're calling string new, which creates an empty string for us. And note that it's a mutable variable, right? So we can change the string as we need it later on. Then we go down here and we print our name, right? And this is very simple. All we do is we say, enter your name, and we print it out. And notice that I'm using the print instead of print line. And this is different because, as you can see, it's going to print all on the same line, but not wrap around the next line. And this next line is very important for that. So what's interesting about Rust is that the way print statements work is that they save as much as they can at once before printing anything out. So in this case, it's saving anything in this enter your name section until we finish this line or we tell it manually to push everything out that we have right now. And so what we're doing here is we're telling the input output to flush the buffer, which is what it's called, and send out any code that is, or any string that is currently in the buffer. And once that happens, then anything that we've told it to print that hasn't been will be printed. Then looking down here, we now have our read line. So what we're doing here is we're calling the standard in, which is telling us, hey, here's the standard way to get input into your program. And we're saying read one line and read that line into our input variable that we declared earlier, which, as you may remember, is a string. And so that string is read into input, and input is overwritten. And then finally, what we do is we call dot unwrap, which basically tells Rust if there are any issues, just panic and crash the program. And don't worry, we'll cover a safer way to do that later on this semester. So then finally, at the end here, we are printing out that input, and we're calling trim, which will remove any white space to the beginning or the end of the string. So now that we've talked about this code, let's take a look at it in action. All right, so now that we're in the uh, interface here, we can take a look at our code and we'll take a look at running it. So all we'll have to do is do cargo run. And as you'll see here, it'll ask for my name. And when I type in my name, it'll say howdy mess. So this is a much better way to do howdy world because now it's interactive for whoever you put in there, right? So for example, if I were to put Eustace's name in there, it'll say hello Eustace or howdy Eustace. And so this is just a way to get input from a user now, keep in mind that, once again, this unwrap, if something goes wrong, could crash your program. So just be aware of that. All right, so now that we've taken a look at that demo, you're probably thinking, wow, that was a lot of work. I really don't like that. I wish it were something easier like it is in Java or uh, in Python. And that's totally fair. But as you get more and more practice with this, you're going to get more experience, and it'll feel easier and easier. So don't worry about it feeling too much now. You're going to get practice with it. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about how to read in from a file. So looking at this program, you'll see that we once again have these use standard IO, standard FS. Don't worry about that for now. As I said, Eustis will be talking about that soon. So looking at our function main though, we have a couple of new things on here. We have this file open, and what that's doing is it's taking in a string of a path. So just like you could put that path into bash, you can put it in directly here. And you can see that it's going to open up that file. So we're going in the source directory, 
and we are opening main.rs. And once again, that dot unwrap function will say if there are any problems, if that file doesn't exist or whatever, just crash the program and we'll change that in the future. However, when we take this code now, we then go and create a, what's called a new reader or buff reader. And this, just like before with printing, how we had to flush the buffer to send it out, this will take this code and read in only a certain amount at a time. And what that's useful for is creating a for loop where we can iterate through it. So as you can see in this for loop, we say for line in the reader dot lines. And what dot lines does is it says that it has, hey, here's the first line, here's the second line, here's the third line, and we'll continue doing that. And it allows you to do it in a very clean and succinct way. And then finally, all you have to do is get line.unwrap so that when the line exists, it will just print out. Otherwise, you can also just kill the program. And this is a very simple example, but you can obviously make this much more complex. You can read a specific line. You can do some more formatting to the line. You can do a lot of different things with this. So let's take a look at this code now over in VS Code. Okay, so now that we're back in our environment, this file reader, as you can see, is just opening up the file that the program is compiled from and then printing it out. So if we do cargo run, you'll see here that you will get just a simple Rust program there that will say uh, all of the code that we had there. Now, if we wanted to do something more custom, we could. So for example, let's print out every line. So we'll do let mute uh, line number and we're going to set that equal to one to start off and then inside here what we'll do is we will print out the line number by adding extra formatter and then adding line number down here add the comma and all we have to do now is increment line number if I can type correctly there we go okay so now if I run cargo clean and cargo run You'll see when it prints out this time, you'll get line numbers for each and every line. And so you can see we start out with a line number one and go all the way up to 15. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy with it, you could do other things like, for example, correct for the fact that line number nine only has one character over, whereas line number 10 has two characters over. Because as you can see, this is not quite aligned. It's off by one character because of the double digits. And you can do other optimizations like that, but I'll leave that up to you. All right, so in summary, today we talked about Rust input output, and IO allows the program to send and receive data, and we also talked about how it can be not only just a human, but it can also be to a file as well. And then we talked about the flush command, the read line command, the lines command, and how to unwrap things. And once again, with unwrap, we'll talk about it more later. That's a big point of emphasis because obviously this unwrap function is not very safe and it could crash your program. So we want better ways to do that, which we'll talk about in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.